This is Twit. <laughs> so, you know, and I don't think it's a secret that I like to game. I wind up covering a lot of the gaming news here because I have experience with some of it. You know, I've even covered stories in the past of what I've done because I had to modify my system to play a game. Well, this week, I thought I'd talk about my favorite gaming platform, Steam, had a nice update. And yes, I've tried many of the other competitors, but overall, Steam has easy experience for me. So no shade to the others. Just It's just my favorite flavor. If you, if you prefer something else, that's okay. You know, I'm, this is just me. But back to the update. The biggest feature is the Steam game recording. So if you're a person who likes to share parts of your gaming, Steam now makes it easier by having that feature built in. You do have to be able to run the Steam overlay on your game. And if you if it if it can, then you can set it to record your gaming experience. Now I should say this is record like you would save a screenshot. This isn't like Twitch streaming and rebroadcast recording, because the file generated will be found in your new recordings and screenshots folder. The quote from Valve says, There are many ways to use this all new feature, <clears throat> all new set of features from capturing your highlights to documenting entire campa campaigns. It's easy to find, clip, and share your gameplay. So even there, it's, you know, they're not talking live, <clears throat> excuse me, live streaming. Uh, there's a lot of other changes for the Linux users as well, such as native Linux games now default to running the Linux runtime, also known as Scout. And you probably see that in your updates once in a while, rather than the legacy runtime environment. Now, this should give better compatibility for all Linux distributions. The new client will also detect and pass commands to an already running client significantly faster and even adds a command line option to prevent Steam from inhibiting the screensaver when activity is de detected. There are some environmental variables which will be set, which will which you can set, and they will always fall back, cause it to always fall back to X11, even if the environment's set to Wayland. So that way you can have some better compatibility if you have something that won't play in Wayland very well. Uh, some bug fixes have been included, which are like fixing a slow startup on Linux systems, where the reverse host name lookup for the loopback interface is not localhost. It fixes a case where the wrong DPI scaling factors used for systems using non GNOME based session with an active GNOME desktop portal service. So probably not everybody on here, but you know, there, there's a, a few people having issues with that. So if you're running non probably KDE or would be a big one, but you're still using the GNOME desktop portal. Uh, they also fixed a crash when launching Steam Web Helper, and there's several other crashes crashes that they fixed. Another feature re-enabled is the use of installs from the Steam client via the streaming dropdown, improved detection of other computers for streaming, and peer downloading when using a secondary wireless interface, and support for AV1 video streaming on high-end systems for remote play, which should nice. speed up everything. There's a lot of fixes and updates that I only covered some of them. So if you look at the article linked in the show notes, you'll see more details. They also link to the official Valve release notes where you can get the full details along with a history of previous updates. So now that the homework's done, happy gaming. Yeah, fun stuff in there. Fun stuff in there. And I guess X11, X11 is not dead yet then. <laughs> well, it, it'd be X on Wayland, so... It's running a compatibility, I think, a compatibility layer. Uh, I had a I had a problem with the game just today. Actually, I had a few minutes to play a little Factorio, and went to try to uh, copy and paste into it to get a blueprint working, and uh, copy and paste wouldn't work. Come to find out, it was an X Wayland problem, and uh, because I'm running with Wayland, I had to launch Factorio in Wayland native to get copy and paste to work. So it's, it, there's still some little issues in there. And X11 is going to be around for a long time, just for compatibility yeah because they've got some old program that everybody uses and nobody wants to update and there'll be some curmudgeon hanging on to their little x11 plushie and not willing to give it up hey it's leo laporte i hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv for more visit our website twit.tv or subscribe in your favorite podcast client there's also a link somewhere down there <laughs>